<laughs> don't put this in. <laughs> yeah, right. feature me who's editing, don't put any in. <laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome to this special series for the Cosplay Ball. My name is Luna Flair. And I'm Lydia Hartwell, and we're here to talk to you guys today about cosplay! We're both part of a cosplay group here in Kansas City called Another Castle Creations, where we get up to all sorts of costuming and glittery nonsense, which we'd love to tell you about. Our friends at the Kansas City Public Library asked us to share our thoughts about all things cosplay, but first we should answer the question, what is cosplay? Cosplay is the combination of the words costume and play. It was popularized by the Japanese film director Nobuyuki Takahashi after he attended the Worldcon Sci-Fi Convention in 1984. These two words describe exactly what it is costume and play. You may have put on a costume for events such as Halloween or Carnival, but cosplay usually takes it a step further by not only putting on a costume, but also putting on the character and attempting to portray them to the best of your ability. Fun fact! Even though what we know as cosplay today got popular in the 90s, one of the first documented examples of cosplay happened in 1908 when Mr. and Mrs. William Fell attended a masquerade ball. The Cincinnati couple dressed as Mr. Skygag and Miss Pickles, who were popular comic strip characters at the time. So this has been around for a while and it's really fun to celebrate. Okay. So not only has cosplay been around for a while, there's so many different ways to cosplay. Some of the ways are closet cosplay. We'll get to the builds later that require things like power tools, but one of the best things that you can do is go to your closet, see what you have that's close to the character you want to portray. This is called closet cosplay. It's one of the great things to do because you already own everything that you have and it's just very eco-friendly. How green! Another category of cosplay is sourced cosplay. Thanks to the World Wide Web, it's never been easier to make your costume as accurate as possible. Do you want to make something from a galaxy far, far away? There's a website for that. Have you ever noticed that Jedi food capsules are actually pen caps? Thanks to all of these wonderful people out there, you can find out how things were actually made in movies or TV shows that you're trying to portray. And you can also connect with other makers that can help you make your cosplay dreams come true. Here are some of our favorite resources for when we're looking for that little extra magic. Maybe your character has something that you can't find anywhere else. Maybe they have drill curls that are nine feet long or arms the size of ice cream trucks. That's where this category comes in. When you say you've built your own cosplay, it means just that, you've built it from start to finish. That means you've done all of the planning, all of the sketching, all of the sewing, all of the foam work, all of the LED work, anything it takes to make your character come to life, you've done. Here are some examples of things I've made from scratch. This aerial gown, I researched some historical patterns for the bodice, I drafted the circle skirt, I, ooh, I also made this crinoline, look. When I made my Moana cosplay, a lot of the references that I was looking off of were from production stills or concept art because the movie hadn't come out yet. So I had to draft a pattern for my bodice and then I had to try to find high res scans of the skirt pattern so that I could hand embroider those on there and just try to put this costume as best as I could together. And sometimes cosplay is like that. You just have to take what you have and make something of it. Here's some of mine. For my Cinderella, I did a lot of the same things that Luna did. I found a historical bodice that I liked. I made a couple mock-ups to make sure it fit and then drafted out a skirt that was gonna fit over my hoop skirt and petticoat. For the fabric, I could never find a lace that I liked. So I found an off-white lace instead at Joann's and then dip dyed it one afternoon to get that perfect silver blue color. For Captain Marvel, I actually used a bodysuit pattern that I'd already made before and I knew fit me really well. I then took apart the top, cut apart the whole pattern, and then re-pieced it back together to get the iconic stripes across the top. It involved a lot of math. This is where things can kind of get crazy. A lot of these techniques will involve things such as hot glue, power tools, heating implements, things that can be very dangerous. Please make sure that you're always following proper safety procedures. And if you are underage, please make sure you have an adult present. Protect your eyes, people. They're the only ones you've got. We've given you some examples of cosplay, but that doesn't necessarily mean it all fits into these categories all the time. Some of our favorite cosplays are actually across multiple categories. For example, for myself, I tend to commission my props from another prop maker because I don't really want to deal with them. <laughs> <laughs> that's staying, that's staying in. So I prefer to commission my props to be made. Yeah. Support your local artists. 
There are so many different sources that you can get inspiration for cosplay from. Uh, there's movies, there's TV, there's comic books, there's anime, there's manga. Really, the choices are endless. Lydia, what's your favorite part of cosplay? Um, I personally really enjoy the creation process. Um, I like sitting down, kind of figuring out how I'm going to put something together for the first time. What about you, Luna? Um, let me think. My favorite part of cosplay is interacting with the people, like when you're like at a convention and you get to be in cosplay and sort of be that character for them. I just love it when it feels like that moment is so special for them. Here's what our friends at Another Castle Creations had to say about their favorite parts of cosplay. Hi guys, I'm Chris Jade and I'm a member of Another Castle Creations. My favorite part of cosplay is being able to be somebody else. It allows me to step away from my usual introverted form and really branch out, you know, have more fun, be more adventuresome and interesting than I usually would on a regular daily basis. Uh, it also allows me to meet a lot of really great like-minded people who are creative and just unusual. I highly recommend it. Hi, I'm Ruby, and my favorite thing about cosplay is that it's a great outlet for your creativity. Um, I feel like a costume is a wearable piece of art. Hello, I'm The Walking Farnsworth, and my favorite part is the creation of the costume. I, I do 3D printing, foam work, um, sewing, um, kind of all kinds of aspects, and anything that it takes to bring that character to life. We're so excited okay. to walk you guys through this crazy hobby called cosplay. Have you ever cosplayed before? What's your favorite cosplay? Have you never cosplayed before? What's your dream cosplay? Let us know in the comments below. And please, feel free to reach out to us on social media if you have any questions. We're so excited to share some of the tips and tricks that we have. Here are some of the places in KC that we like to go when we're looking for cosplay supplies. And until next time, go out and be creative. Bye. Don't take my lines from me. I know, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I wasn't nice to have you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>